Hey guys, it's Stephanie. <clears throat> Here back because I just finished actually two books that I really, really enjoyed. Wanted to kind of give you an update on. The first, Alphabet Weekends. Um, I had actually mentioned in my 20 books I want to read in 2020, and I'm done with it. So, wanted to just kind of give it a little review. I absolutely love this book. It's been a long time um, since I've read a contemporary romance that I really connected with and enjoyed. Um, and this is one that just, it was just what I needed. It really got me back, reminded me how much I used to love them. Um, kept my interest, didn't seem too cheesy, um, that kind of thing. So I'll remind you if you didn't see my other video or you've never heard about this book. So there's a girl who recently broke up with her longtime boyfriend, um, just as she thought they were going to get engaged um and she's kind of feeling upset about that and her longtime best friend is actually a guy who happens to have feelings for her um and he decides that this is his chance to kind of step in and make everything better his name is tom her name is natalie um so tom decides that since she has all this free time now instead of date night with simon which is her ex-boyfriend now they are going to hang out every weekend and have a date um, or do something that each week will start with the next letter of the alphabet. Um, and they got to take turns choosing what they would do. So let me see. I know A was abseiling, I want to say. it's. I know it's repelling, but I'm not exactly sure how they... This is a British author. So she is obviously from England, and I'm not completely sure how they pronounce that. Um, but, so basically they went repelling for A, and she was scared. It got her out of her comfort zone. Um, B, she took him to the ballet. C was, let me look and see, they went canoeing. So, as you can see, that kind of thing, back and forth, all the way through the alphabet. And as it progresses, um, she does start developing feelings for him, and she does realize that he's the one that's been there for her all along. Um, so we follow that storyline. We follow Tom's brother Patrick's storyline um, with his wife Lucy, and Patrick has lost his job and is feeling kind of sad and depressed about it, and is really not giving Lucy a lot of attention. Um, and Lucy is starting to have feelings for her best friend's husband. Um, and things start to develop between them. So we kind of follow that storyline. We follow the storyline of Natalie's parents. Um, who her mom is diagnosed with kind of uh, depression. Gets on medicine for that. Because she's feeling kind of worthless now that all her kids are gone she feels like nobody needs her anymore and her dad just really loves her mom and it's breaking his heart that she feels useless and feels that way um and he doesn't really know how to help her so their storyline is that and her dad, her excuse me her dad actually ends up having a couple of strokes um and then the mom is needed again to take care of her husband and so that is kind of resolved. Um, and then, of course, by the end of the book, uh, Tom and Natalie do end up together. She realizes he was kind of what she always wanted or needed. Um, and like I said, I think what originally grabbed my attention about this um, was the alphabet concept because I am such a word nerd. But I loved it. I will for sure... Uh, read more by this author. Um, she's got a couple more that I've heard about. I believe the reading group is one that I've got um, on my bookshelf, so I'm excited to jump into that now that I've been introduced to this author. Um, so I would, I would definitely highly recommend this book. I, I got through it pretty quickly. I'm not the fastest reader, but I got through it pretty quickly. The next book, um, was actually pretty popular. 
Um, and for that reason, I kind of skipped over it. I'm not really one that jumps right on popular books. Just because they're popular all the time. Just because I will read pretty much anything. Um, so this was popular a little while ago. And that is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sure most of you probably know completely well how to say that. Um, but I had heard so much about this for so long that I thought it couldn't possibly live up to the hype. Um, and now it's going to be an adaptation on Hulu next month. Um, so I decided before I could watch that, I was going to go ahead and read the book. And again, very pleasantly surprised. This is more of a hard-hitting contemporary. Um, and again, got through this one way faster than I anticipated. Not that I didn't think I would like it. It just wasn't something that I thought I would fall in love with, but I really did. I couldn't put it down. I devoured it. Um, if you're not sure what it's about, there are a couple different storylines. There is a woman named Mia who is an artist, um, and she has a daughter, Pearl, and they travel around a lot. They don't have a lot of money because she is an artist. She's a photographer. Um, she takes pictures that are kind of weird. Um, she cuts them apart and does different things with them. Um, she does kind of time lapses of a bird corpse decaying. Um, she did, what else did she do? She took a picture of a flower and cut out the petals and replaced the petals with different materials at one point. Um, so she does different things like that. But because of that, each of her projects um, kind of takes her a really long time. So they don't necessarily have a lot of money. And she does a lot of odd jobs kind of in the meantime to make ends meet. <clears throat> And she has moved to Shaker Heights, Ohio with her 15-year-old daughter and kind of promised her daughter that this is it. She's not going to have to switch schools three times because her mom got the itch to move. Um, she gets to settle down here. She's safe to make friends, get to know people because she's not going anywhere. Um, her daughter, Pearl, who's, you know, again, never really settled anywhere. Um, kind of awkward at first, but... She gets to know people. Um, the Richardsons are the family that Pearl kind of gets to know, and are also the other family that you're following in this book. So the Richardsons are a Shaker family from way back. Mrs. Richardson was born there, met her husband in college, and came back. Um, they got their own house, but now that uh, Mrs. Richardson's parents are gone, they actually rent out her childhood home which is kind of where Pearl and Mia come into the story. They are actually renting the Richardson's upper level of their house and living there. Um, and that is how Pearl, excuse me, kind of gets to know uh, the Richardson children. There are four Richardson children. There is Trip, Lexi, Moody, and Izzy. Moody is the one that's Pearl's age, and she gets to be really, really close with him. Um, she kind of starts to idolize Lexi almost. They start to be friends, but Lexi is very popular. She's older. Pearl is a freshman. Lexi's a senior. Um, she gets to accept an early decision to Yale. She is in drama, has all these nice, fancy clothes, whereas Pearl's used to shopping at thrift stores. Lexi's never been to one, so she takes Lexi to her first thrift shop, and um, Lexi just loves it because it's vintage, that kind of thing. Um, so they're friends also. Um, there's Trip, who um, Lexi actually ends up kind of having a crush on a little bit. And then there's Izzy. And Izzy is kind of the outcast of the family. In Shaker Heights, they're all kind of prim and proper rule followers. And Izzy doesn't really conform the way that her family wants her to and the way that the rest of her family does. Um, she kind of sees the problem with the perfect image that her whole family's trying to project. Um, so, like I said, she's kind of the outcast. And the story opens 
with the Richardson's house that they live in actually having caught fire and Pearl and Mia being gone and have disappeared. Well, Izzy also happens to be gone. So Mr. and Mrs. Richardson, uh, Lexi, Tripp, and Moody are all kind of watching their house burn, trying to figure out what's going on, thinking back over all this. And the story is kind of a flashback to all these relationships and everything. Um, so it's just really interesting the way that it all came together. Um, Mia is kind of an outcast in the community because she's not conforming to a normal job. She's a an artist. Um, and the Richardson kids, they talk about that they sit at home and watch um, different things on TV after school every day. And Pearl always goes over and hangs out with them. Well, Izzy actually ends up over at Pearl's house hanging out with Mia and helping Mia with whatever her work is because she doesn't want to be around her siblings. So she starts to form a relationship with Mia. And Mia kind of understands Izzy in a way that her family never has, her parents never have. Um, and they form a special bond. So there's that relationship as well. And then we just we just follow all their, these relationships. There are twists and turns. There's some things that go on between Pearl and Lexi where you learn that Lexi is a little bit entitled. She kind of thinks that she can do what she wants. Um, Moody, who is very close with Pearl and has feelings for her that Pearl doesn't necessarily realize Moody has. And so there's him dealing with the jealousy of Pearl choosing his older brother, Tripp. Um, there's confusion in the family because Pearl's really, she's very smart, but she's described as not really being that attractive. Um, and they said that Tripp usually kind of goes for airheads, um, is I think how they said it. Um, and not usually for people with substance like Pearl. So there's a lot of kind of looking into that and exploring the ins and outs of the relationship and how things aren't always what they seem. Sometimes you have to take a chance, um, give up the perfect image that you think you have to follow or you might miss out on things kind of thing. Um, and the moral of the story or kind of the end game is Mia telling Izzy that Sometimes you have to burn everything to the ground and start over, which is why there were little fires everywhere. Um, and again, I just, I love this book. So if you've kind of been on the fence about it, um, I wasn't necessarily on the fence. I really just wasn't interested at all. But if you've heard about it and have been thinking about it, I definitely would recommend it. I loved it. I got through it super quickly. And I'm very excited, like I said, to see what Hulu did with this show. So hopefully... At least one of these sounded good to you. Maybe you'll want to spend some time reading them. And other than that, you can like this video if you want. Comment anything you're thinking. Um, subscribe if you want to. Otherwise, have a great night, day, whenever you're watching this. I'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Bye!